All right, for our final topic in this detour, let's learn a bit about asynchronous JavaScript. In an upcoming section, we will learn in detail about the asynchronous behavior in Node, but a quick introduction about async JavaScript is necessary, and that quick intro is what this video is about. We're going to understand the what and why of async JavaScript. Now, the first point to understand about JavaScript is that in its most basic form, JavaScript is a synchronous blocking single-threaded language. And the three points mentioned here are really important. Let's understand what they mean. The first point is that JavaScript is synchronous. If you have two functions which log messages to the console, code executes top-down with only one line executing at any given time. In our example on the right, we see A is logged before B. The second point is that JavaScript is blocking, which is because of its synchronous nature. No matter how long a previous process takes, the subsequent process won't kick off until the former is completed. So if function A has to execute an intensive chunk of code, JavaScript has to finish that without moving on to function B, even if that code takes 10 seconds or one minute. You might have seen this happen in the browser. When a web application runs in a browser and it executes an intensive chunk of code without returning control to the browser, the browser can appear to be frozen. This is called blocking. The browser is blocked from continuing to handle user input and perform other tasks until the web app returns control to the processor. The last point is that JavaScript is single-threaded. A thread is simply a process that your JavaScript program can use to run a task. And each thread can only do one task at a time. Unlike a few other languages which support multi-threading, and can thus run multiple tasks in parallel, JavaScript has just the one thread called the main thread for executing any code. This brings us to the point that in its most basic form, JavaScript is a synchronous blocking single-threaded language. But as you might have guessed already, this model of JavaScript creates a huge problem. What if we have a task to retrieve data from the database and then run some code on the data that is retrieved. We have to wait on the first line for the data to be fetched, and when the data finally comes back, we can resume with our normal execution. But that could take one second or even more. And during that time, we can't run any further code. And JavaScript, if it simply proceeds to the next line without waiting, we have an error because data or response in this case is not what we expect it to be. So we need a way to have asynchronous behavior with JavaScript. And the question is, how do we cater to asynchronous programming in JavaScript? Well, as it turns out, just JavaScript is not enough to achieve that. We need new pieces which are outside of JavaScript to help us write asynchronous code. In front-end, this is where web browsers come into play. In back-end, this is where Node.js comes into play. Web browsers and Node define functions and APIs that allow us to register functions that should not be executed synchronously and should instead be invoked asynchronously when some kind of an event occurs. For example, that could be the passage of time, the user's interaction with the mouse, data being read from a file system, or the arrival of data over the network. This means you can let your code do several things at the same time without stopping or blocking your main thread. This is pretty much the what and why of asynchronous JavaScript. To summarize, JavaScript is a synchronous blocking single-threaded language. This nature, however, is not beneficial for writing apps. We want non-blocking asynchronous behavior, which is made possible by browser in the front end and Node.js on the back end. This style of programming 
where we don't block the main JavaScript thread, is fundamental to Node.js and is at the heart of how some of the built-in module code is written. Alright, with these newly learned concepts about character sets, encoding, streams, buffers, and async JavaScript, we are now finally ready to join back the main path on learning more about built-in modules. Let's proceed to the next video where we can learn about the FS built-in module. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.